the stupid, confounded, darndest, idiotic, moronic, loser, pathetic, dastardly, forsaken, of all the people in the world to happen to, why did it have to be me? So much time, so much effort. Who put that tree there in the first place? Bazaar, I heard a loud noise out here, and I came running. What has happened, my friend? What hasn't happened, Jingles? What hasn't happened? First thing this morning, my mom shouts at me to wake up, and I do, only to fall out of bed and sprain my wrist. Then, as I'm walking downstairs to breakfast, I slipped on my sister's roller skate. If that weren't bad enough, my sister then knocked her glass of milk all over me while I was eating, ruining my favorite pants. While at school, one bad thing after another, starting with being sent to the principal's office for talking during a movie during class. Then at lunch, I drop my lunch all over the floor. I get home to ride around in my go-kart. I hit a rock and crash it into a tree. Look at it. It's ruined. I am having the worst luck today, Jingles, the worst. I've never had a day like this before in my entire life. I'm sorry to hear things are going so rough for you, Lazar. I know exactly how you feel. Nobody knows how I feel, Jingles. Nobody. How could they? Nobody has ever had such miserable luck as I am having right now. How could they? Believe it or not, Lazar, everyone has bad days, equally as bad as yours, or perhaps even worse. I know it may be hard to see that now, but it's true. Even if it's true, Jingles, it's small comfort. It's not meant to be comforting, Lazar, only that it is possible to understand what you're going through. Perhaps, Jingles, but right now I feel miserable. I am miserable. It's been an awful day. My go-kart is ruined, and I don't know how life will ever be good again. Might I offer a suggestion, Lazar? Always, Jingles. I know it might not be easy to hear this right now, but other people have problems just like you. Accidents around the house, accidents around school, accidents around work, or even accidents while driving. Everyone has them. I know that doesn't give you any solace right now, and it's not meant to. I only want to point something out to you, my friend, something that you've overlooked, as the day has clouded your mind with a series of horrid events. What's that, Jingles? A point I want you to understand completely. That there is no such thing as luck, good, bad, or otherwise. No such thing as... But I've been lucky before. Remember when we went to the carnival and I won the door prize for being the 200th person to go on the roller coaster? You were fortunate, Lazar. Some would say blessed. But luck had nothing to do with it. You were in the right place at the right time, and something wonderful happened to you. Just like this morning, you started getting out on the wrong side of the bed, and ever since your day has been clouded in misery, affecting all your actions all the way through. Your clouded judgment put you in the wrong places at the wrong times, and bad things happened to you. All of today's events had no more to do with bad luck than your winning the door prize had to do with good luck. They were events, plain and simple. Nothing more. How you interpret them makes them good or bad. Luck does not exist. It never has. But what of my go-kart jingles? Look at it. How could this not be unlucky? You were in a bad mood, driving distracted, and something bad happened. You weren't paying attention to what you were doing, where you were driving, and you crashed. That's not bad luck. That's all on you, Lazar. I think I get what you're trying to say, Jingles. Look towards the view screen, Lazar. There's a movie just starting, and it will tell you three important things you need to know about your day today. See if you can find them in the movie, and learn how they apply to all that's happened over the last few hours. Look towards the view screen, Lazar, and learn.
This time that hussy Jane's gone just too far. Call me an eyesore, will she? And me a treasure there, a present from her husband's own mother. Well, she'll live to regret it. Time takes care of so many things, especially when you're a specialist in time like I am. But Jane will never suspect. She just won't understand why she's having so much trouble. Because it's all going to be completely accidental. <laughs> going to be all right. Well, now, that is too bad. But I'll work things out. These stupid humans. They think things are responsible for accidents. Material things. Like that electric cord that caught Jane's foot. Sometimes they lay their troubles to jump piled on the stairs. Sometimes it's an iron on a shelf. Other times, ice on the sidewalk. Unlabeled bottles in the medicine chest. A bed rung in a ladder. Soup on the stove. Really, of course, any clock knows it's people who bring on accidents. The kind of people who don't know how to handle their emotions. That awful Martha. But I fixed her. Once I found that feelings were the key, it was so easy. Same with Ed Caldwell. He didn't like anyone calling him a grease monkey. And he certainly didn't know how to handle his feelings. <laughs> No question about the tie-up between Eddie's feelings and that broken hand. Same way with Martha and her wedding ring. That ring's a symbol to Martha. A symbol for everything she hoped she'd find in marriage. Only fool that she is. Human as she is, she married Jeff Hoover. And Jeff's first love was always the bottle. So Martha waits at home and twists her ring. That's the way it is with these crazy humans. Tension keeps boiling up in them like the soup in Martha's saucepan. It's always been right there, primed and waiting for the moment when they bump up against a dangerous situation. And when they do, well, chalk up another accident. Why? Why, because emotions distract, of course. Those boiling feelings they take people's minds off dangerous situations. And when that happens, 
It's just a matter of time until disaster strikes. Like with Martha. If she stops to think about it, she knows hot soup can scald, and that it's important to be careful in the kitchen. But here it is. Nearly 7.30. That means Jeff stopped off at Jack's place. So Martha's all upset and angry. She doesn't know what to do. And not knowing. She's blinded by the boiling up of her emotions. Those feelings of hers, they distract her from the dangers of stoves and pans and boiling soup. Jeff's problem isn't quite the same as Martha's. Whiskey isn't really at the heart of it either. You see, back when he was younger, he got all in a swivet over her. Well, over part of her anyway. just one thing wrong with Martha. She didn't have anything in that pretty head of hers but buckwheat batter. That's when Jeff really started hitting the bottle. He knows it isn't Martha's fault she's stupid, but she just plain pours him to tears. Trouble is, boredom's a distraction too. If you're living in a dream world, you can't pay attention to reality. And that gives accidents a chance to happen. <coughs> Jeff didn't die. But if he had, the preacher likely would have called it a tragic accident. Even though the certificate should have read, died of boredom. Not all distractions are inside people, of course. Lots of them come from outside. If it hadn't been for the phone ringing, nothing might ever have happened to that Ainsley woman. Poor Mrs. Ainsley. She always did wonder what that phone call was about. Even when it looks like a distraction's all outside, more often than not, there are still some feelings mixed in somewhere. Like Sid. He claimed it was an accident when Patty banged her head. Actually, <laughs> things were tight at the shop. When Sid tried to unload his tensions with silly horseplay, Patty got hurt. Or look at Jane. Because those two brats of hers were blowing off steam all out of control, she fell down. have happened, of course. Not if that idiot female had showed a grain of common sense. After all, you only have to pay attention to three simple rules to put an end to accidents in any home. One, pay attention to your feelings. for dangerous situations. That's all there is to it. But how many humans are smart enough to follow the rules? Like with Jane. 
She knows she gets tense and on edge on cleaning day. So she ought to paste signs all around in her head in big red letters. Slow down. Watch out. Don't rush into anything. All right, you kids. You know the rules about those dart guns. But of course, handling it like that would have been too intelligent for a human. Same way with cleaning. It bores Jane worse than anything she does. That's why it makes her edgy. So you'd think she'd have sense enough to change jobs often. Take a break. Try something more interesting for a while. Work a little on her new dress, maybe. You see? Now is the time to finish the cleaning. After she's calmed down. Of course, it was a good idea to get Ted and Walter out of the living room. That electric cord made it a dangerous situation. All right, you kids. Out, out, out. Jane wasn't that smart, though. So now she has a wrenched back. And she'll have more before I'm through with her. Call me an eyesore, will she? Jane, honey, what is it? What's wrong? Oh. What is it? Oh. Take it easy. She must have been having a nightmare. Oh, if it only was a dream. No, if you can't imagine. It's that clock in the living room. You know we've been over that confounded clock a dozen times. We oh. can't get rid of it. My mother would have a fit. But it's a lie. Talking to me. Talking me. It hates me. That's why I had this accident. And it says I'll keep on having them. It must be those pills the doctor gave you. <laughs> You're just imagining things. No, Mill. That clock talked. It did. It did. She's so, so right, right, of course. But, but she won't, won't get, get anyone, anyone to believe her. And by, by the, the time, time she's up and about, about she, she won't, won't be sure of anything herself. herself. But, but she will she keep having accidents. She, she can, can count, count on, on that. that. Well, Jane, it's good to see you up. Can't get you down until you're up, you know. Now we need to set the stage for that next accident. Make it seem properly accidental. Tiger here should do nicely to trip over. A little temper will help, too. What's going on around here this morning? Aren't you going to get me any breakfast? Well, Your Majesty, maybe it's just about time you got your own breakfast. Now, an outside distraction to get things moving. Here we go. Jane, did you learn anything from that last time you had an accident? What are you talking about? Let go of me, you big baboon. You know what I mean. You're liable to break your neck if you go charging out of here in all directions. Please, honey. Milk, I must be crazy. And after that nightmare and all those good resolutions I made about being careful. Thanks, Milk. Oh, you crazy dog. Do you want someone to fall over you? Isn't that enough to give you fits? But I can afford a few slips. Time's still on my side. Maybe I can do better here in the kitchen. cleaning this house all day, and I'm just about to go out of my mind. Okay, say, bring that new pattern of yours. I'd like to look at it. Okay, I'll see you in a little while. Bye. <laughs> Why, I don't believe it. Don't tell me that girl's beginning to use her head. Well... I'll get her yet. A dog and a cat on Sunday morning might just turn the trick. That's it. Hey, girl. Hey. Oh, 
Hey, Jane. What gives? Oh, Tiger has a cat up a tree. But you know, I guess I'm getting smart in my old age. He'll just have to learn about cats on his own, because I'm not about to go charging out there in my night clothes. So there, you old lie sore. Aren't you disappointing? Come on back to bed, you character. I'm that insolent young Jezebel. I'll teach her. Ted, you remember what Mom said? Oh, you draw. That's it, boy. Yeah, I did, That's I did, it. I did. Go did. It, Ted. Well, Why you want to get me that gun? Get my springs, my, my gears, my face. Oh, why was I such a fool? I'm as bad as that stupid female Jane. Worse even, because, because I, knew I knew better. better. But, but I, I hated, hated her so, I didn't I even take my own advice. advice. I, I let my feelings run away with me, just, just as if I were human. So now there'll be another clock here taking my place. My place, and me a treasured heirloom, gift of milk's own mother. Oh, why did I ever interfere? When I knew that accidents are bound to happen, when you take time out for trouble. Wow, that clock was just like my day, Jingles. It was so evil. Just as I attributed all my day's wrongs onto luck, that family had that clock to blame for all its misfortunes. But we all know a clock isn't alive, it isn't vicious, it's just a clock. It is no more power over our lives than good or bad luck. Is that what you're trying to tell me, Jingles? In part, Lazar, in part. That you are responsible for your own actions is an important part of today's lesson, but not all of it. What else did you glean from this film, Lazar? Several things, Jingles. As the movie said, there are three parts to overcoming accidents. Facing our feelings, not running from them or hiding from them. If we're angry, we need to know why we are angry, if we are to beat that fire in our tummies. If we don't beat it, the anger will cloud all of our judgment. Is that right? Excellent, Lazar. Excellent. Go on. Beware of boredom. Like when I got home from school today, I was angry. Actually, I was furious. Everything had gone wrong today, but I didn't know why. Also, I didn't know where this anger was coming from yet. So I went out without thinking, got in my go-kart, and, well... Look at the results. I was bored. Boredom combined with anger is a dangerous weapon. Of us individually, and those around us too. You've always been an excellent learner, Lazar. Splendid. And the final thing the movie pointed out? Watch for danger. How many times have we put our hands under running water? Assuming it was cold, only to find it was not. Assuming the obvious is overlooking the obvious. 
by assuming that nothing bad will ever happen to us, even small things in our homes, invites those very bad things to occur. Lazar, you've got it, completely. I'm very proud of you. In the space of half an hour, you've gone from hot-headed and unmanageable to level-headed and completely reasonable. There is one more point, Jingles, that I'd like to make. Oh? What is that, my friend? What else have you learned today? Just this. When someone is having a bad time, a bad day, or going through a difficult situation, there are two ways you can respond to them. The first is like you did with me, Jingles, and that is to talk me through what is going on in my life. Help me to understand what's happened and why. Start talking generally about life and move towards the specifics of that day's issues. This approach will help a friend in need so very much. That's the approach I always use, Lazar. I found it to be very successful in all of my friendships. What is the other way you speak of? It would be to belittle what your friend or family member is going through. To dismiss what they are going through as a bad day, a bad time, and say something to them like, Ignore it. Cheer up. Don't let it get you down. By dismissing someone's problems as if they were meaningless, not talking them through, it makes a person feel as if their problems aren't as important as yours, as if what's going on in their life isn't meaningful. If you tell a person to chin up and move on, you're telling them that you're too busy to deal with their problems or just don't want to. A response like that, if you'd done that to me, Jingles, would have made me feel even worse than I already did. We all need to feel important. That if we are having a rough time in life, we have a friend to stand by us. You're a true friend by every definition of the word. Thank you, Lazar, as are you. Now, how about we get out of here for a while? I just got my allowance and I'm craving some ice cream. My treat. What say, Lazar? Feel like an ice cream cone? No. Do I look like one? Har, har, har. Well, it's good to know you've got your sense of humor back, Lazar, even if you do tell the worst jokes imaginable. Come on now, let's go get some ice cream. <laughs> Thank you.